This lesson is about completing the square. And this is actually not factoring, even though it's really related to factoring. Um, once students know their factoring and they know perfect square trinomials, then this is an extension exercise that students can do uh, based on that. Now, completing the square is traditionally taught uh, very abstractly and generally without any purpose. I remember learning it and thinking, well, it seems kind of magical and weird and why would I ever want to do such a horrible thing? Uh, but if we teach it the right way and the way it's presented makes sense to the students and is in a context, then we can really make this work very interesting and the students really get into the materials for this work because it is so hands-on. So as long as students know perfect square trinomials, they can do this work and then the extensions and the natural applications of completing the square right away. There's two main applications of completing the square. Uh, one of them is to solve quadratic equations. Now students can solve quadratic equations if they're factorable by using the zero product property. But if they're not factorable, then they can use completing the square to solve equations. So oftentimes we'll do work with uh, solving equations through factoring, and then all of a sudden we'll have one that isn't factorable, and then we'll talk about what we can do. And that leads us then back to the algebra tiles and trying to uh, factor it by making a rectangle, and then we see what could happen. So that's one approach to this. Another purpose for completing the square is to rewrite things for graphing. So when we have quadratics and we want to put things in a vertex form, completing the square will allow us to graph it in a form that's very useful and uh, very simple to graph. So there's lots of applications of completing the square. And generally, I use it when we're doing solving equations. Uh, we're solving those quadratics, and all of a sudden we have something that's not factorable, and that leads us back to the algebra tile work. And so that's how it's going to be presented here, not necessarily to solve an equation, but in relation to the um, trinomial factoring that we've done previously. So I'm gonna do a couple of examples as I would with the students, and then we can talk a little bit about um, some notes on what students may do and where this work will then lead them, especially as they go towards abstraction. Today, I have a special puzzle for you. You're gonna be given x squared plus six x plus seven and see if you can make a rectangle out of this so that it can be factored. Go ahead and pause the video and then come back when you're done and let's see how you did. So how did you do? You probably couldn't factor it and that's not your fault. It's not because you weren't clever enough. It's because it actually can't be factored. And so oftentimes when we try to factor something and we can't factor it, we have to ask, well, is it because I'm just not seeing it and I'm not clever enough? Or is it because it actually can't be factored? So let's see why this can't be factored. So here's our x squared, and then here's our seven units. And we know our seven units have to make a rectangle, and this is the only possible rectangle that we can make. Now, what we could do is, we could try to put our six x's here, And then we might be tempted to say, oh, I can just put a zero pair here to make this a full rectangle. Because we've done that before, right? We've added, we, this is still 6x. It's seven positive x's and one negative x. But why can't we do that here? And the reason we can't is because this is positive. And when we have a positive here, we know that we have to have either a positive and a positive on both sides or negative and negative because right now this unit here would have to be negative one in order to match the negative and positive side. So because of that, we have to either have all positives or all negatives, and there's no way to do that. So x squared plus six x plus seven can't be factored. But today, I'd like to do something different with this, and it's not actually factoring it, but let's see how close that we could get. Now, if we're gonna be factoring and we're not gonna be making rectangles, but we're gonna kind of like make up what we wanna do with these, we might as well do the most perfect thing possible. And the most perfect rectangle we have is the square. So what I'd like you to try to do now is take these same pieces, the x squared, the six x, and the seven. And I'd like to see if you can make as close to a square as you can. So you're not gonna make a complete square, but just see how close you can get to making a square with these materials. And then pause the video, try it, and then come back and let's see how you did. Okay, 
So let's see how you did. Here's how I did it. I have the frame, so the frame is perfectly symmetrical. And I have these two little pieces missing down here, these little units, so it kind of looks like a square, but I don't quite have it filled in all the way. And man, it would sure be great if it was a complete square. And so you know what? I do want to make this a square, and so I'm just going to put these two right in here, and now I've done it. So now I have made a square. And hopefully you're sitting there saying, you just can't do that because I've changed the amount. Now I have x squared plus 6x plus 9, which is a perfect square, but I only have 7, and I can't just do that. So if I want to make a complete square, I can't just add these two, but we can do this. I can add two zero pairs to my picture. Now if I look at my units, this is still positive 7. And what we can do is we can take these two green units and put it in here. And now I have my square, but I have these two little guys left over here. So what have I done? We've made a square, that's x plus 3 squared. So that's kind of like factoring it like we did before. But because this isn't factorable, I'm going to have this little bit left over, this minus 2. So what this tells us is that x squared plus 6x plus 7 cannot be factored, but I can get really close. I can write it as a perfect squared trinomial, x plus 3 squared, minus 2. Now why isn't this in factored form? Because I don't have a product here. I have a product here with x plus 3 squared, like that's something times itself. But then I have this minus 2, so I have this extra um, addition or subtraction, in this case, on the end. But if we don't have something that's factorable, we can do this. And this is going to be really helpful to us uh, later on, and we'll do some applications of that. This process is called completing the square. Why? Because we can make a square, or as close as we can to a square, and it's going to be incomplete in some way. So what we do is we make the square, and then we have a little bit left over, and that's how we can rewrite expressions that aren't factorable. Let's go ahead and try one more example. x squared minus 8x plus 19. Now, I'll tell you right now, this will not factor, so you're not going to be able to make a rectangle out of it. So instead, see if you can complete the square. That is, you're going to make a square, but then you're going to have a little bit left over. And so you might have to use zero pairs or some other technique to do that. So see if you can take these materials and make them into a square with something left over. Go ahead and pause the video and then come back when you're done. So here's what you should have. We have our square here, which is x minus 4 on each side. And then we wanted to have 16 squares here, but we had 19. So we just have these three uh, units that are left over. So how can we rewrite this? Well, we just label what we see. We see that we took our pieces and we have x minus 4 squared. And then we have these three left over. And so we can rewrite x squared minus 8x plus 19 as x minus 4 squared plus 3. So now you can go ahead and try to complete the square. And you can use the materials to do that. You can also do it in drawing if you would like. And just go ahead and have fun with doing those. And again, as you work, see if you can find some patterns. See if you can see what's happening and find some techniques to make the work as easy as possible for you. So hopefully you can see that this is a very natural way to complete the square. There's nothing really kind of magical about it. They're just using the materials that they're very familiar with, and they're just manipulating them in a slightly different way. They're combining the idea of zero pairs and perfect square trinomials, and it's actually a really nice um, material for them to understand what completing the square is all about. Now for this lesson so far, it's just been an exercise in, in doing the technique. Uh, we haven't applied it yet to anything, but you could easily just go ahead and if you're doing this as an extension of solving equations, then right away you can just take that last expression and then solve the, the equation from there.